Hey everyone, my name is Sean Cecil from the Oculus Institute, and today I'm going to teach you guys the best jobs for empaths. Okay, so I have a lot of people who give me a call and they, they have a concern because they say, Sean, you have to understand, I'm an empath. Do you know what that is? And I'm like, yes, I know what that is. But then they're like, okay, well, you know, I'm very, very sensitive to other people's emotions and, you know, it's, it's very difficult for me to be in certain environments and so I've been in all these jobs and, and being an empath, these negative emotions just come on to me and then it just, you know, I start to get really stressed out and I can't handle it and I burn out and I have to quit. What do I do, right? What's a job that I can work at that solves this problem, right? Now, obviously, if you're just saying, hey, I don't want to be around other people or I only want to be around people who are always positive and always happy, those are some pretty serious constraints. But before we dive in and I tell you the best jobs for an empath, the first thing is we have to go over the three different kinds of empaths so you can figure out which one you are. So the first kind of empath is the traditional definition. So this is somebody who is very sensitive to the emotions and energies of other people. So, you know, they're walking around, they're in their job. Uh, John over there is pissed off because his wife screamed at him. And uh, the conventional empath can feel that anger and it affects their emotional state. And it causes them to then feel, you know, angry or stressed or on edge or something along those lines, right? So a conventional empath is someone who just indiscriminately, without a filter, picks up the emotions of everybody around them. And it's a lot less common than people think. Um, there are a lot of people who think that they are conventional empaths and they're not. And we're gonna get into, they're actually uh, the third kind, which we're gonna talk about in a second. Um, but before we do, let's talk about the second kind. So the second kind of empath is what's called a selective empath. So a selective empath is somebody who can choose which emotions they want to absorb and which emotions they want to reject, right? So this is something that, you know, traditionally I was never a selective empath until I started getting into spirituality, until I started getting into psychology, until I started studying other people, and I picked up the ability to sense other people's emotional states. But I also, because I was coming from a very grounded place, uh, had the skill to reject the emotions that I didn't want to take on. So if somebody comes in and they're very stressed, it's possible to reject that stress, to acknowledge it in them, but to not let it affect you. So selective empaths are people who have both the skill of sensing other people's emotions, like conventional empaths, but they also have the ability to set their own state and to filter accordingly. And this is, some, this is crucial. This is something that can be taught, right? That's very, very, very important. If you are a conventional empath and other people's stress other people's anger and fear and guilt bleeds onto you, you can train yourself to be a selective empath and you can move from being that first category to being the second category. And then that, in that case, your empathy becomes a superpower and that's where you know, empathy comes from, right? Then your empathy becomes a superpower because now it's something that you can use when you want to and you can put up a filter and put up a wall when you don't wanna have something negative bleed onto you. And then now that brings us to the third kind of empath. And I have to put quotes here, and third kind of empath, because these people aren't really empaths, but they think that they are, right? So the third kind of empath is what we're gonna call a highly sensitive person, right? So a lot of highly sensitive people will say that they're empaths because they're getting their terminology mixed up. So what's the difference? A highly sensitive person is someone where the external situation the external, um, you know, other people, what they're saying, what they're doing, causes triggers in the highly sensitive person. So the other person may or may not be stressed, but it will cause a trigger. The other person may be stressed, but then it's not the energy of the other person bleeding over, it's the fact that that stress is triggering them because of childhood memories, because of past experiences, because of stuff like that. So they're not picking up on somebody else's energy per se, it's their own emotional energy that's coming from within, that's triggered from without, and then they, they get mixed up and they think that it's coming from someone else when in reality it's their own internal triggers. And so now you're probably wondering, how do you tell the difference between whether you're an empath or a highly sensitive person? If you're an empath, you're going to feel similar feelings to the people around you. 
if you're a highly sensitive person, you're going to feel feelings in yourself that are triggered from within that don't necessarily align. So for example, if someone's really angry and you're an empath, you're going to start to feel angry. If you're a highly sensitive person, you're more likely to start to feel afraid or on edge because you're stressed out about what they might do and your situation, it may bring up memories of all this other kinds of stuff. There's a big difference. And this is why I said that conventional empaths are actually very rare because normally what happens is they're not mimicking the emotions of others, they're reacting based on their own triggers. So most people who think that they're empaths are actually highly sensitive people. So now that we have these definitions, we can take a look at what jobs make sense and what paths make sense. So if you are a conventional empath, then the best solution is to learn to filter. And this, as I said, this is something that can be trained. Become a selective empath. And then you take what you once perceived to be a weakness and you turn it into a superpower, right? So if you're a highly sensitive person, then you've got your own triggers. And then the solution there is you want to do some deep internal work that could be through NLP methods, that could be through psychotherapy methods, that could be through the psychohacking methods that, could, that, that I commonly work with, um, that could be through spirituality and other kinds of methods, positive psychology. Use a variety of methods, use whatever you need, but dive in, get clear on your triggers and disconnect those triggers so that you're not subject to your environment and that your emotional state can exist and prosper independently. And then from that place, if you do that work, then now the whole problem of, oh, what do I do as an empath dissolves because you weren't an empath in the first place, you're a highly sensitive person, you've done the work, and now you know, you're just operating as a normal person who has whatever your own values are and then you go find a job based on your values. So that leaves the second one in the middle. What's the best job for a selective empath? Well, the best job for a selective empath is a place where you have the ability to use your superpower. It's something where you do interact with people a lot. Something like coaching, something like sales, something like talent management where you're working closely with people and training them. Something where you have the ability to pick up on people's feelings, to pick up on people's emotions, and then use that knowledge from your superpower of being a selective empath to then improve their outcomes, improve your outcomes, and improve the environment and culture of the whole organization, whole environment you're working in. So normally, when people come and they say, oh, I'm an empath, what do I need to do? They're looking for a way to not work with people. But the truth is that once you do the internal work, once you develop the ability to filter, once you, you know, if you're a highly sensitive person, once you disconnect those triggers and, and escape that, you know, dependence upon everybody else being calm, then contrary to expectations, if you're really an empath, the solution isn't to avoid people. It's to go to them. It's to use your power to lift them up in a way that nobody else can. So if you're a conventional empath looking to develop the ability to selectively filter, or if you are a highly sensitive person looking to do some deep internal work on your triggers and to get yourself in a state where you have control of your emotions and you have control of your state, then I would definitely advise that you check out some of the work that we do. Uh, I have a Facebook group called The Science of Career Freedom, and though it is very focused on careers, we also do a lot of internal work. There's a wonderful masterclass series in there where we cover things like overcoming fear, where we talk about overcoming if you feel like you're not worthy, all of that kind of stuff. So go to the Science of Career Freedom, search it on Facebook, apply and watch the Masterclass series. I look forward to interacting with you and I look forward to helping you out. Have a wonderful day.